So you mentioned recession. So Steve, I want to kind of bring you into this because typically construction is seen as a leading indicator for you know where we are in the U.S. economic cycle. But we've all, you've also brought up kind of the demographics, the structural shortages that are occurring in the key sector. When we were we were chatting before this panel, you mentioned you know it's not so much about cyclical versus secular; it's about evolution. And I'm yeah. curious that that struck struck me. I'm like curious if you can kind of explain more around that particular idea. Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. Um, because of the nature of the industry, because of the highly fragmented nature of the industry and the micro market aspect of it, and the fact that everything that gets built gets built for the use by people, um, the kinds of things that end up driving it um, are difficult to say whether they're cyclical, uh, cyclical or secular um, because they're often a result of simply the evolution, the idea of what an office is. I mean, Think about Mad Men, right? The big deal was to have that corner office with the glass. And, you know, and I, you know, I did a lot of office uh, design when I was in architecture for 20 years. And that went to cube farms, and then that went to hoteling and collaborative spaces. And now, I don't know where it's going to go to in terms of remote and hybrid models, but it continues to evolve. Look at what has happened to retail. Uh, we all have big malls. Everybody went to the big mall. Well, the big malls, I think there's a, a half as many malls as there were. Right? And there was a resurgence of smaller um, downtown retail. Um, I live in the Upper East Side here, and every open space is now a cannabis shop. Okay, <laughs> Talk about a budding industry. Sorry. Um, but you look at any one of these, look at Warehouse. Warehouse was a dumb metal box that just kept rain off of dumb cardboard boxes. That's all it ever was. Today, not only did e-commerce drive that market through the roof, and COVID drive it even further through the roof, those things, are, there'll be thousands of employees. They're as, as sophisticated as airports. They're incredible facilities now, right? They have evolved due to all kinds of other factors that end up being what are people buying, what are people need, what are people doing, right? It all really comes down to how the population is, is behaving. Parking structures, another just incredibly dumb thing for years, now, right, they've got sensors in them, so you'll know which parking garage I want to go to, because that one's actually got six spaces available to me, and here's the price for me. I can figure all that out online, and it's got electric charging stations. All these things evolve so much that that's part of what's really driving the construction industry is, um, and you mentioned productivity, we're an embarrassment. Um, when you look at the productivity numbers, have just basically bumped along flat compared to anything else, including agriculture, have all gotten better. We've bumped along. But the growing focus on modular, prefabrication, and generally industrialized processes that are driven by technology, finally beginning to make a lift in productivity. Right? And so I think that you're going to see things like that begin to lower the cost of getting any kind of thing built. The, the idea of the digital twin is now also going to reduce the um, uh, operating cost, which is going to really help inflation. Right now, every single building is operated essentially on a rule of thumb. Oh, you just replace the filters every six months. Yep, <laughs> saying, Eddie, you didn't do that. No. Let's have the filter tell us when it actually needs to be replaced. Thank you very much. The people who are doing that now, there's a, a big one uh, with the entire uh, brand new airport in Dubai, is a complete um, digital twin now. Every moving part in that is reporting back to a central computer and this is when it actually needs to be touched by human beings. They have cut two thirds of the typical cost of operating, right? So there are I important things that are happening as a result of the evolution of these building types, right? Which can have hopefully an impact on the first cost and on the operating cost, right? And help everybody um, in terms of, uh, of the economic impact.